exclusive map. Uh-oh, here we go. Right here. Especially on the uh, Seven Figure Squad. That was a game changer, and I've been to tennis, I've been to forward, I've been to so many conferences, really? bro. There's absolutely no conference that delivers the type of execution, mindset, CEO fucking transparency that you're gonna get, <laughs> they're nowhere else. Motivational speaking is great. Listen, if you want motivation, go to YouTube. Oh. You wanna learn how to build a business, process issues, get better, that was this event. We were rocking with PHP, we are rocking with PBD, but we get to see him operate in a different company, like the vault, the valuetainment. In the room, you're hearing people come in from 50 different countries, people that are making a couple hundred million a year that are there to learn from him. It was good to see how the CEOs, how they think to help us think more like a CEO. I was reaching the dream, the vision on just mentorship. Yeah. It's that culture, that blueprint, that standard, and that's right. what Patrick has built. Man, that manual that he gave yeah. everybody. I mean, that that is gonna help people make millions. But Patrick also sets the example in everything he's doing. But then you see, JP, the, the CEO's asking that question, why? Because they got nobody else to talk to. I come to study Pat, bro. Look at the way he interviews uh, Tom Brady. And Mike Tyson, if you could tell Cus one thing today that you didn't get a chance to tell him, what would you say? And he breaks down crying because that's edification of what Cus did to change Mike's life. How Pat's changed my life, our life. But Matt, how you've changed my life. I think it's just so priceless what we have. The Yo. importance of having that people around you, bro, yeah. priceless. Because one situation like that could fucking finish you. You know, Patrick's often said that entrepreneurs will save the world. How we're saving America through free enterprise, there's only one of me. But if I build and rock with the right people, collectively, we can make a massive impact and influence out there. Very rarely do we ever have the opportunity for all my guys to get together and uh, have JP Pena join us too as well. Real estate extraordinaire. Out go. of uh, uh, LA and now Orange County. Yes, sir. And um, Devil Dog, Marine Corps combat veteran too as well. But very rarely do I have Money Macy right next to my left and Ella Suazo here and Chris Hart all together where we can just be at an event yeah. where we can learn, we can network, we can shake hands without being at our own events at uh, Las Vegas. We're pulled in at our own event in, in January, February, we're pulled in 50 different directions. So, yep. uh, what was your thoughts today on being in an environment where we we're rocking with PHP, we're rocking with PBD? but we get to see him operate in a different company, like the vault, the value attainment, to see our mentor that we meet with on dream team calls and leadership retreats, et cetera, et cetera, to see the rest of the world respond to our CEO, that the values and principles of how we built PHP is something that the rest of the world is paying attention to. So <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. Um, so we were talking about this earlier. I've been with Patrick now going on 14 years and there's a saying, people become parent deaf if you're around people too long. And in the room, you're hearing people come in from 50 different countries, people that are making a couple hundred million a year that are there to learn from him. And it's a reminder of number one, how grateful we are to have someone like that in our life, a mentor like that in our life. And to put things in perspective where people are, were investing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to improve. And some people that maybe weren't doing so well, they still find a way to be in the front row because they wanted to get that, 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 be in that environment. Then you have other people that are already doing well saying, hey, I know I can do better. I want to be in that environment to be challenged. And then there's a different set of people that just came into the event and you know what? Let me, let me try this out. But by the end of the event, they said, damn it, I got to be in that room yeah. later because there was so much value. And I, there's a lot of guys that go to different events and motivational speaking is great. Listen, if you want motivation, go to YouTube. Yep. You want to learn how to build a business, process issues, get better. That was this event. Yep. And the reason why I love this event so much personally, I went to Mario and I said, Mario, I feel like this was my event. They said, why? Because when we have our PHP events at our conventions, I'm always worried about butts and seats, mm -hmm. you know, make sure the team has their shirts and, you know, the team shirts. Well, there's so many admin things that even I'm worried about and the logistics. And it's hard for us to enjoy the event because we have so much that we have to get ready for. This was one, we just have to show up and we just get to work. Yeah, because we're in the event, we're doing our event. That's it. So it's in the event versus on the event. Yeah. And uh, I got a ton of value because I'm also coming back for a couple of years, but now I'm in a phase of my business where it's the best it's ever been. We're doing millions of dollars a year. Uh, our guys are making money. Now it's like, okay, what's the next leak that we have to plug? Yeah. What's our next five moves, 15 moves? And also having everybody else here making new friends, connections. I think we're all on the same page, especially where the country is today. Yeah. Um, 
I'm excited for what's going on, but this event added more value than any event I've been to. What's your thoughts? Because this is your first vault. First vault conference, yep. yeah. I would say for me, I was resold the dream, the vision on just mentorship. Uh, similar to what Mason just said, we've had Pat for 10 years in my life. Take it for granted, having a leader of his matter to in my life, mentoring me, coaching me, having max seven calls, dream team calls for the last five, seven, six, seven years. How much and are these guys paying for that? People were paying $14,000 for, 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 for tickets to for a three-day Zoom. conference yeah. and for consulting. Yeah. And and, uh, and these, I, I realized more and more how many entrepreneurs are out there on their own trying to figure things out. What's their next move? What should I do? How do I scale? They have questions. There's no mentorship. Yeah. I was telling one of the guys today, he works in real estate. I said, I can make a phone call to a Matt Apollo like that, boom, and get coaching. I can call a Patrick David like that, boom, get coaching. Before making the wrong move in my business, I can consult with someone on, through a text or through a quick phone call. Yeah. People pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for that mentorship. And just, to, just to, we've been blessed to have it for the last decade, man. It's just yeah. priceless. Sure. Yeah. So awesome. uh, two, for me, man, it was just, uh, I take a different aspect. And it was good to see how the CEOs, how they think, and uh, the, the issues that they're going through with their process and to help us help me specifically think more like a CEO and then also seeing the um, the metrics and how much money certain certain CEOs are making you know it's, it's cool to say I got a hundred million dollar business but how much are you bringing home really yeah, well, at the yeah. end of the day what you take you know, home their overhead and yeah. everything that they have to spend and then some of the questions that they were asking how to build culture you know uh, how do I get my guys to buy That's in second nature more, for you you know incentives how do I incentivize yeah. my guys and it's like this, we're spoiled. this is all Second nature, like I said, to us. <laughs> we're spoiled. Like, we're as spoiled. Hell. Yeah, we have this already, but it also just uh, helps me to go back to tell my guys. I'm like, guys, these guys. The, the lowest ticket in the room yeah. was what five, five to seven hundred dollars. Yeah, eight, eight hundred dollars yeah. to get in the room and hotel in the back, travel. That's back door, that's, right? Or back, yeah. back row. That's in the back. Yeah, right. But also to see that hey, we got this system. We have it. And if you just implement it, yeah. we could be doing just as well, if not better, than a lot of people who have so many other things that they have to worry about yeah. that we don't. Speaking of culture, it's very interesting, too, to see that our competitors are in the room. So our competitors are learning from our CEO how to run their business. And you don't see us at our competitors' so CEO's events. It's I mean, so there's They're zero in. interest for us to go to our competitors. I would still like to debate them on stage. I would actually love to do that. That would be fun. That would be, be an interesting I'm conversation. To it. <laughs> I'm game. Because the guys that are the guys that are showing up, it's like the one to talk the most smack is like, why are you here? You were talking smack about this. So why are you showing up to the event? If you know better, go. What do you come back? I find it very interesting. Talk is cheap, but your actions are really I'm telling just, the right I'm just, I'm just story. Sorry, Mike. It's the same guys that say we made our business does hundred million. What's your profit? Oh, we made a half a million. So you're pumping out numbers, but what's your actual take home? It's the same thing in our industry. People pump up numbers and a lot of our competitors do that. And it looks exciting and interesting on the internet. And that's why we're the second yeah. largest acquisition in IMG, all the, over everybody else. Our numbers are actual real. So the people that just talk- No, we're the largest acquisition of, PHP, of IMG in terms of agent size. Correct, agent yeah, size, yeah. correct. Um, but I'm talking about overall, because I mean, Ash Brokerage, I think, was, yeah. right? But they're, gotcha. they're private wealth. Yeah. So correct. So it's just a matter of, you know, on that, on that point, I was talking to some competitors. It's like, we get this on a day to day, and now you're going to try to implement this? Good luck. You're going to yeah. figure it out happen next week. Because it's, di it's a different culture. Different yeah, culture. Different culture. They complain about what they just, it's, they complain about what they just came to pay for. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so. Spe speaking of culture, I, uh, I mean, JP, we're in the Marine Corps, double dogs, right? The military has having a hard time right now recruiting to the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, but the Marines aren't having them. They're the only branch of service that met the recruiting numbers. So. You're in a completely different industry. You're, you're well, you're in, a, you're in a, our cousin industry. You're in real estate. So when a, when a guy like you in real estate comes in, I mean, we're very fortunate to be in the insurance business because when the interest rates rise, we actually benefit. It actually helps us, helps our clients, helps the policyholders. When our interest rates rise, it doesn't necessarily help guys in real estate. So how has the vault conference helped a guy like you? Well, you know what's interesting is I'm actually here for work, right? And I hit up Mario and I said, dude, at the vault, I don't care what ticket you have available, I'll buy it, I have to. And I would say out of all the sessions, I was maybe able to get in three or four, but this is the beauty. And for, for you, for example, like you said, it's the first time at the vault, yeah. I was at the first one, wow. CEO ticket in yeah. Texas. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, that was a game changer. And I've been to 10X, I've been to Forward, I've been to so many conferences, really? bro. There's absolutely no conference 
that delivers the type of execution, mindset, mm -hmm. CEO fucking transparency that you're gonna get, <laughs> then nowhere else. So I'm working on this big portfolio that I gotta inject to El Salvador, which is a Central American country, right? And I've been puzzling. My first meeting in Boca was that sitting with big time Central American millionaires, right? And I gotta put this pitch deck together. The first session I walked oh, into pitch is pitch Matt. Pitch Tom Ellsworth. Yeah, and pitch I'm just pitch. like, fucking serious, dude? <laughs> like, I'm fine. So I'm like recording. I put my assistant on FaceTime. We're putting all this stuff. Real she's value. taking notes. Like right now, she's finalizing the pitch deck. Where else are you going to be able to go to a conference that's going to cover so much ground yeah. in a business perspective from acquisition to selling, yeah. culture? Yeah. Bro, it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So every time I come to these events and to answer your questions like the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps has a set of standard that makes it what it is. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna find that in the Army, you're not gonna find that in the Navy, you're not gonna find that in the Air Force. Even though we have the same equipment. Same equipment. Same tanks. Same everything. Same M4. Culture. Yeah. It's that culture, that blueprint, that standard, mm -hmm. and that's right. what Patrick has built. So when I come here, I don't come here just to listen to the speakers, uh, obviously to network, to meet friends. I come to study Pat, bro, because I'm all like, this dude is like fucking 12, head to, 12 steps ahead yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the way he interviews uh, Tom Brady, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys pay attention to that, Question, but I'm looking yeah. at his body language. Best friends. I'm looking at his way of how he he takes that answer in, how he processes it, yep. his movement, his gesture, how he looked at his notes and all this stuff. Because I, I think that one thing we all have in common here is that we're not where we want to fucking be yet. Sure. And in order to get there, we got to follow those models study them to every aspect even to like their routines in order to achieve that and to answer that so the fucking marine corps is a fucking badass because yeah. they expect the best from us that's right <laughs> by the way we're not where we want to be because we see a bigger vision for ourselves yeah, dude. i mean coming from our, there's not one guy here that grew up in a rich family not one of us but when we see 100k income like shit, nobody in my family had 100k yeah. and unless we see another v version of ourselves a bigger vision of ourselves we get stuck there we get Make twenty thousand dollars. We get stuck there. You make five hundred thousand. You get stuck unless you have somebody coaching you and guiding you along to to see what's next. Um, this next car, this next thought I had was as I'm watching these guys here at the vault, and I see how many different countries are here. Fifty, 50. 50 different countries, and Patrick puts up a leaders bulletin <laughs> for the top ten countries in attendance. Uh, he also has the people that have the most people here, butts and seats. Yeah. For the companies that are here, I'm like, guys, if you guys don't know anything about Patrick, but, that's the way exactly how he runs PHP. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly Literally. how he runs PHP. We're all laughing at this stuff. So what are the similarities that you see from our CEO, Patrick, and how he runs both companies, PHP and Value Timid? I'll tell you, you want me to go first? I'll, I'll say standards. You know what's okay. crazy? Like, oh. we grew up in a standard of PHP where... When you first get started in our company, like your bladder has to increase there the you passion, work, and hope. <laughs> you have to get it removed, bro. Yeah, because you know, like, you're going with Pat's rolling three, four, or five hours straight. And so we're sitting back there. We know what to expect, man. Don't drink, don't drink too much water. <laughs> you're at a conference, man. Be locked in. Be focused. <laughs> and we're sitting there. These business owners are come, getting up, walking out. Like, maybe I need to restaurant. Like, we're going for two more hours. I can't stand two more hours. And people are getting up and walking out. But Pat held him accountable. He's, not, he's like, I don't need your money. I'm not here for your money. Like, you're locked out. And to, to see his I'll summer, see you next year. Yeah, I'll see you next year. See I'll you see you next year closing, then, yeah. Closing, closing comment, closing message. People are walking out. And pass like, I'll see you next year. And just to show his level of, uh, he's not here for the money, man. He's yeah. here to bring the value and help people level yeah. up and to see the level of account. But I saw three or four guys come back. Yeah. They came back and sat down. Like, this is probably the first time in years someone's held them accountable. Yep. Yeah. But, and before that, these guys are just showing up late. They kind of loudly gag into, it's 8.30, guys. Yeah. They're loudly gagging at 8.40, and they're wondering why they're locked, because yeah. I pay for this. Bro, bro, you, yeah. you're paid to raise your standards. Yep. Swaz? Yeah, the, um, I noticed, too, a couple of times, you know, Patrick's standards are obviously extremely high for us, and um, he's still looking, us out, looking at us, checking us out, what we're doing, seeing if we're there. I noticed it as well, you know, just saying, hey, where my, where my guys at? All right, cool, they're locked in. Um, but also, too, one of the biggest things is we have playbook, we got sales manual, yeah. right? We got those things, yeah. and but Patrick is making sure that he brings that to the vault, and that, man, that manual that he gave yeah. everybody, I mean, that that is going to help people make millions and millions of dollars. They don't get it yet, though. They don't understand They it. don't even I understand. Mean, I hope they read it when they get back. It's worth millions. You know? Oh, my yeah. God. I, you know, here's a question, so I was on that. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah. what percentage of people do you actually think are going to go through that again, 
cover to cover, and if they have a team or a company yeah. or other people, are actually going to train them from that on a weekly day to day. Less than one percent. Very maybe, small maybe percent. People. Actually, a statistic: one yeah. out of ten. One out of ten. Ten percent. So ten percent. Ten percent. So ten percent. Review everything. This was done. Uh, Tom Perry did this. Yeah. Can, can you? Can you? Uh, real estate guy, right? Yeah, real estate guy. Real estate guy. Real estate guy. He said that one out of ten will actually get home, study that, and start implementing. But, but what about training their team on it? That's even a smaller percentage. That's even smaller. smaller. That's, that's what I'm that's saying. Him. That's, that's them so, just so, looking at yeah. it. So going back to it, yeah. the duplication is not going to take place, which yeah. is what a lot of them came in for. Yeah. Where maybe what drives them is individuality. Well, that's, anyways. So and that's one of, and one of the biggest <laughs> things that Pat talked about is is growing and scaling the business is yeah. duplication. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if you're not creating systems and duplic so that your people can duplicate SOPs things like that, yeah. you completely missed the mark from this yeah. this uh, event. Yeah. So so let. Matt, let me ask you this then, because I mean, obviously, I admire you. You've done very well. What do you say to all these individuals that got the Lambos, got the Ferraris, all this money and stuff like that, but still can't implement that system and procedure? What is it? And you still see them here, because I've seen a bunch that still come to the vault. Yeah. I've seen them a bunch at other events, sure. flexing all this stuff. But for me, I call that a hustle. That's a temporary hustle. Yeah. What do you think it's that that factor that needs to change? What needs to move? What? A couple of things. We've been we've been to all the vaults, right? So I remember bringing in Patrick for the very first time in his first vault, introduced him to to the value attainment community. At that time, in 19, 20, 21, 22, everybody's beating their chest. I've got a hundred million dollar company, yeah. got a twenty million dollar company, got a fifty million dollar company. Everybody's laugh, right? And then interest rates start rising. Then pandemic has lingering issues. And then supply chain's got some lingering issues. And then you're competing with the government because your employees don't want to work. They read take unemployment checks. And I've, I've slowly seen the brother, how many people, especially at our CEO session, got up and said, um, Patrick, my industry is down 40%. Shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Patrick, um, I'm paying my guys a half a percent commission. Yeah, I saw that. Remember yeah. that one? Yep. yep. Holy moly. That was the highest I've ever and he, seen. And I'm wondering why I can keep salespeople. <laughs> Half a point. That's bad. Right? Um, how do I recreate myself? I can't get... So these guys aren't as limber as they were three, four, five years ago because of the fake economy. Now, when the quantitative easing gets pulled back, then there's less money injected into tightening. the system. Yeah. And there's a tightening of the, uh, the, uh, uh, tightening of the, uh, of, of, of the markets and, and capital. People are now having to adjust. Mm. And so, to all the guys driving Lambos, hey man, you had an opportunity to stack cash and put that money away. The, the sad reality is, if you need to let go of that Lambo, give me a call. <laughs> well, hold, hold on a second, because I got a Lambo. Mason's buying Lambo. He's, 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 he's buying Lambo. <laughs> but yeah. when you have an opportunity to capitalize your business, I get the marketing aspect, because we do that too. You know, we, we buy cars, exotic cars. My, I've got two Rolls Royce, by the way, just those cars are, they're a pain in the ass, man, having these cars, you know, exotic cars, because you got to keep it constantly clean. And we do it for marketing. I only bring, bring up my Rolls Royce on Tuesdays and Saturdays. But if you have the opportunity, if you don't need a car for marketing purposes, I, I, and by the way, I, I say this very gently because people say, you know, you're the faith made millionaire. Why are you going out there? I use it for marketing purposes. I'd be very happy with a 1999 whatever. And, but I use it for marketing purposes. I know people are going to judge a book by its cover. People are judging opportunity by its cover. And if so, not that it's right, but if they're going to judge a book by its cover, make it a very nice cover. Yep. So at least I have an opportunity to have a conversation with you and then flip you on what we really stand for, which is not necessarily a show and a dough. Can I take you one step further yeah. and support you on that? Because if you do it the right way, people don't realize that you're going to drive Lambos, Ferraris, Rolls, exotics yeah. for cheaper than your Corolla. If you do it right, correct. You'll you actually will drive, yeah. guys, I drive my Lambo for less than you drive your Corolla. That's right. Because there's ways to do it. Number one, you buy through a business. Number two, yeah. without even using life insurance, I'm talking about the 6,000 pound yeah. write-off option. I'm talking about that if you go buy a car, it's a depreciating asset. Yeah. You have now lost money. The moment you roll it off the lot, yeah. you're done. Yeah. But if I get a Lambo, I get a Rolls Royce, I get a Ferrari, I get an exotic that's a couple hundred thousand plus, it's like a home. Yeah. It actually appreciates. Yeah. So I might put some money down and then I might pay monthly for a little bit, but by the, by the time I flip it in a year or two, yeah. I actually can profit. Yeah. So people don't realize that that's actually a business. Same with watches. Mm-hmm. Why do you wear the watch? It's, it's, it's actually a game. So being money smart, there you go. if you understand that you buy a Louis Vuitton belt, yeah, it's 500 bucks, but I'm gonna wear this belt for several years, you've had to flip out your $75 belt 15 times already. You've actually spent more yeah. 
So sometimes buying a little luxury, buying a little bit better, yeah. well, it is branding, it is marketing yeah. because damn, you must be doing something right to yeah. afford that. Yeah. But if you're also smart with your money, you're actually keeping more than you think. Yeah. So you have to respect the game too. So we talk about the hustle. There's there's the thirty thousand dollar millionaires that have no <laughs> business that have no business freaking doing it. Yeah. Then you got the guys that know what the hell they're doing. And what's funny is a room like that, you kinda know who's who. You can you can yeah, sort 100%. sort through and Matt with you. Yeah. I think you set a great example with all that because You've done it in paces, in phases. Yep. And we've seen you go through the ranks. Say, okay, because we know you're in, we all know each other's income. Because one yeah. thing with Patrick yeah. is he's like, guys, here's what y'all are making. Yeah. Like, there is no BS. It's we all know, transparency. We, we all ever, yeah. So no one can fake it. It's like, damn, I know exactly what your income is. Yeah. And we love that because you can't fluff it. So when he's driving a Rolls Royce, I know exactly why and how we got the Rolls Royce. And um, I think you, you know, I was just thinking about this right now. You built assets mm -hmm. during good times. And you stack cash on the side yeah. to create, you know, cash and capital. Because I've never had to take an SBA loan, brother. Yeah. The, only time I, the only time I used a loan is when we bought our house and we used a VA loan. Right? The smartest choice ever. Right? That's and so, a that's a business decision. And by the way, to all the vendors out there, there is no limit on the top side, man. I'm like, when, when my. Uh, I'm on my fifth VA loan. Product. Crazy. Right. When, when, when Trump passed the law, there's no yeah, limits. No limit. And I'm like buying real estate and I'm thinking to myself, there's no limits on this thing. The only thing that you're going to. Limit you on is your debt to income ratio. And so the mortgage guy sends us a text, this is what you qualify for. I'm like, are you sure? We got that much house? Babe, are you comfortable with that, that much house? But you build assets during good times. And then when crisis comes, that's when you buy more assets on a discount. Oh, well. Buy your toys on a discount. So Matt, can I also yeah. expand on, the, on that question you asked about the similarities between Vault and, and, and how Patrick built the insurance business. So you talked about standards. Uh, it's not even standards of not walking out early. You know, the joke is that we all think that Patrick had his bladder removed as a child, you know, because if, there, if there's a legendary story about bladder control, I'm telling remember, we all remember it's, it's, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pat remember. called my ass out pretty hard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Network health. Thanks Matt, for retreat. Never been able to never know. So, Pat, I have a question. I have a question, Pat. Pat Pat's in the zone. He's in the zone. <laughs> We're watching Last Dance. You get into it. Who's got a question? Mason, what you got? Pat, can we do bathroom break? <laughs> He's like, makes it really next five minutes. He lays it. He lights me up for five minutes, really? and I'm like, in my mind, that five minutes it could have been in the bathroom, but it's all good. Worked out okay. And then Patrick, when we come back, Legendary. he comes over and says, "Bro, you good?" <laughs> always ends with love. He always ends with love. But um, you talk about standards. Okay, that's one part of it. Yep. Um, you know, walking in and out. Another part of it, showing up on time. Got it. But Patrick also sets the example in everything he's doing, meaning. He spent 35 minutes on our health. He talks about us all the time. Get in shape. Like, look at like those things I think were implanted, those freaking biceps of yours. Right? <laughs> you know, Swaz was losing weight. You're yeah. losing weight, gaining weight. Well, good weight, right? You know, we're all getting in shape. And Patrick wants his guys around long term so we can live a happy, healthy life. He did the same thing at the vault. You, you know, it, it's at a point where it's not being rude. But hey, listen, your family wants you around. You got to lose 20 pounds, bro, because you're going to outlast everybody else. Endurance game. Yeah. So it's 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 transfers in, in standards, it transfers an example. He talks about systems, you know. I think when Patrick said, Okay, stand up if you had a system for uh, five systems in your business. We were one, we were like one of the guys, okay, well, I got systems, we got our 1031, we got our captain system, we got our if I, we have systems. So because Pat's fine tuned the insurance game, that's what blew it up, and then it transcended because every business needs a system. Every business needs an example. So I think it does start with standards. Um, but it also is the example that you set, which is maintaining and sustaining. Because I think you and Milton did a did a, a, a podcast about sustain or attaining and sustaining. Yeah, right. mm. So a lot of people can attain the Lambo. They made they got lucky in a market. They got lucky That's in a, a flip. Point. They got lucky. Yeah. They got lucky in an exit. But they have no clue how money works, business. That they, they, they don't know what's going on, it's so they favorite. can't maintain and sustain. That's good. Yeah. So I think Patrick yeah, look, trained us very well on that platform. And I think that's what people are starting to see now with the vault. Look at what PBD is doing with his capital that he got from his exit. We didn't see him upgrade his house. Nope. We didn't see him upgrade his cars. Nope. I mean, he got a car, but it's not like it was like, you know, a million dollar car, he got a Porsche. Because nope. he, he can't fit in a Ferrari that's nope. sitting in his garage. He, he wanna let that one go. But we, what do we see him do? Make an offer to Tucker Carlson. Yep. $100 million contract. Invest into the Yankees. Reinvest back into the And business. now he's an official minority owner of the Yankees, of which you'll be enjoying a... A game soon. 
We'll be in a game. No, we have a contest. We have a contest. We're 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 because Patrick helps that he trained on the ball too. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So he's, he's he's got a uh, contest. He's taking a bunch of guys to the owners' box. I think uh, something too as well. He uh, asked about you know the difference between you know a hustle and a business is simple. Three things: standards, like you said, mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. that can help you duplicate. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because you got a lot of great, talented hustlers out there, but if you can't duplicate yourself, then you're never going to have a business. If you don't have any systems, you're never going to have a real sustainable Nor business. Yeah. Right? It's always yeah. going to be you. Yeah, think about it. we're all here this weekend. Our offices are back home, running, driving, yeah. producing, yeah. serving clients. Yeah. That's while we're mm -hmm. and that's, that's culture. Yeah. 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 And some someone asked in the CEO meeting, "How do you build culture?" We're just like, Pat, we can answer that for him if you want, because <laughs> I mean. Props to Pat. He's done such an amazing job kicking all of our asses in, in an uplifting <laughs> way, but also found a way to be our friend, our mentor, CEO. It's 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 crazy. Yeah. And um, how, how many of the CEO masterminds do you guys attend here, where you have individuals from the Valco, and they'll ask some questions where you guys be like, "Dude, we're I got, fucking." You got that one. <laughs> we're like, practically every question. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking ten yeah. miles away we're, from we're, you. Already, we're, we're, like, yeah. Here's what happens. Here's what happens. They ask a question. Here's a look. We all look at each other. <laughs> we are, I can ask that question. Like, yeah. So let's let's talk about that though. Let's talk about mentorship and associations because we were doing a lot of crazy networking. You know, a lot of guys. How how did you feel knowing that we're looking at each other like that? Because we're gonna answer the question. How do you feel knowing that if you we are all going through issues, yeah. we can just call each other and process issues. But then you see JP, the the CEO is asking a question. Why? Because I got nobody else to talk to. There's nobody else on. You know, there's nobody else. There's not a uh, you know a, a, a local. Mentor, because a lot of guys will coach you and mentor you, but it's done at that coaching session. Yeah. Like for a lot of people at the vault, their mentorship is done, yeah. <laughs> right? Unless they invest in the mastermind. And then, unless it's customized mentoring, it's still in generalities. Correct. Yeah. For us, it's specific. specifics. Yep. Yeah. Specific. For guys that work for Valuetainment, it's specific. So how, how have you observed that? Were you investing $500 to start a business here at PHP? as able to get access to your peers, get qualified with a conference call with, Pat, with Patrick, how invaluable has that been to you? And then have your CEO not create distractions for you about what they do in the world, but they create more opportunities for you about what, what they do in the world. So you talk about edification and when you bring somebody up to the stage, you talk about maybe some of the accolades of the things they've done in business. They were the first of this or they make this much or, but the real education is is how they've changed your life, how they've impacted your life. And I think that's really what hits your heart. You know, uh, one of the guys asked Mike Tyson today, if Cus could, and it's Cus, right? Cus yeah, Amato. Yeah, Cus, yeah. If, 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 you, if you could tell Cus one thing today that you never got a chance to tell him. What a profound question, huh? That you couldn't get a chance to tell him, what would you tell him? And Mike Tyson, the biggest bet. Listen, I walked by Mike twice. I saw him in the airport one time, I was scared shitless. <laughs> I was like, I wanna say hi, Mike. No, he's gonna punch me. And I saw him again on stage, and I was, he was very, very genuine, very humble, you know. But if you can tell Cus one thing today that you didn't get a chance to tell him, what would you say? And he breaks down crying because that's edification of what Cus did to change Mike's life. How Pat's changed my life, our life. But Matt, how you've changed my life. Hart, you've changed my life. Swaz, you've changed my life. Yeah. How many times have, have we had, you know, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning phone calls yeah. about dumb stuff entrepreneurial pillow talk whether it's, pillow talk. Whether it's <laughs> i'm telling you and, 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 by, and it wasn't even just business yeah because a lot of times people aren't struggling so much in their business they're struggling in their personal life and overlaps in business oh. and sometimes I, I need someone to process this issue hey i I'm, I'm inexperienced here yeah i need some wisdom i need some counsel and that's freaking priceless you can't put a price tag on that and that's one thing that people have to understand that i'll take leadership over convenience any freaking day of the week and the uncomfortable answer that you're giving me yeah. is exactly what I need to grow. I have to be mature enough and also wise enough to understand <clears throat> that your approach is to help me, not hurt me. Yeah, I, I, it's crazy. I look at you guys, I look at Matt. I can name so many things he's done in my life from a personal perspective of my faith, my fitness, leadership, business, building a, a, a business. Mason, I'll give people credit. The reason why I know how IU Wells works because of you. Like Mason taught me IU Wells. Like really? <laughs> yeah, you make no money from that. But it's a friendship, right? It's the culture. I, I think it's Swazzle today, but walking to the, the hotel, I have an idea for a mastermind. I'm dead set on it. He gives me a, gives me a nugget on what he's doing. I come, I, I come out and say, babe, we're changing it up. What are we doing? 
I'll, I'll tell you the details later, but Swazo has a plan that, for us. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, but this is just the, the culture of the business. And Pat, yeah. I'm on a dream team call a year and a half ago, two years ago. We got back from TTT, sure. trainer trainer, right? Yeah. Um, we were we were number one team in the company. Basically, we were killing it, but doing our thing. We had a bad week. We'll edit that out, don't we? We had a bad week. We had a bad week. <laughs> we had a bad week. And so, Pat, I say bad. I said, Pat, we had a bad week, but it's just, it's just a bad week. We'll be good next week. He goes <laughs> in for about 25 minutes. I was on minutes, that call. <laughs> that 25 call. minutes, that chew call. me out. But a bad week is a bad month. A bad month is a bad year. A bad year is a bad decade. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa. Like, so as, he, as he's doing that, I'm processing. I'm like, man, what the hell is this bad week? <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm like, who in your life talks to you this way? Yeah. Like, like what other men will pour into you, will dig into you, and hold you accountable to a higher standard? Like, this is priceless. Yeah. He doesn't need me yeah. to have a good week for his yeah. livelihood. It's yeah. net worth his sale already. Yeah. And I think it's just so priceless what we have. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I'll share something here. This is an exclusive map. Uh oh, here we go. Right here. Especially on the uh, Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, Dude. snap. So, six months ago, bro, my dad passed away in December. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, sorry. And, uh, I hadn't seen him for 10 years. I made up that relationship, fixed it in 2020. Wow. And this is after uh, uh, I have a mentor of mine and dude, this guy just, you know, I paid a lot of money to sit next to this guy. We're having lunch. The whole conversation is about my family. And I'm sitting there like, dude, I pay this much money to sit here and talk about family. You know, I'm like, you know, I want the golden nuggets. Like, what the <laughs> fuck do I need to do? Yeah. And the final question was something along the lines of how much time I, how, how old my dad was, how, how many times I haven't lived with him. And then eventually it was like, you got two more hugs. You're gonna give your dad before you don't see him again. And that shit fucking impact me. So I bought a flight, went to El Salvador, fixed that relationship. Wow. My dad passes away three years later, right? Wow. I went through this fucked up situation, man, to the point where six months ago, I was in a garage mm. in ADU with my brand new twins, my kids, my family. Wow. Had to sell my house in West Hollywood, literally down to like maybe a thousand bucks in the bank. This is two years ago. Six months ago. Six months ago. I went from making seven figures to all this. That shit impacted me so much. The reason I'm getting to that is the important mentorship and the people you're around with. Yeah. Because around that six month, one of my good mentors says, dude, I haven't heard from you. What the fuck's up? And I was just numb, dude. I was in this fucking weird, I can't even explain it. You know how to make money, but you're just in this weird contradiction with yourself of yeah. what could I done different? Yeah. Could I have prevented it? Regret, if, yeah. You know, all this shit, yeah. right? Sabotage. Dude, I had a drink in three years, started drinking Good again. Oh. Show and faith, bro. Faith is, I'm driving down PCH and I'm saying, God, like, I don't know what it is, but I need you to like, at least give me the blueprint of what the fuck's going on, what I need to do. And I show up and I see my kids, my twins, everybody in two beds. And I said, what the fuck? This is not what your dad wants. That's what yeah. my friend called my mentor. And he says, JP, if you don't want to fuck yourself, and I have a podcast called Fuck Yourself. And he says, if you don't want to fuck yourself <laughs> out of this, not only would you lose me, but you're losing your family and everything you have worked for, for the people that you care. Your dad would not want to. That week, I made $70,000. Wow. The following week after that, I made two hundred fifty. Then the three months after that, we bought our place in Newport Beach. So. There you the go. importance of having that people around you, bro. And the, the problem is that we don't see them in situations like yeah. that. And when I hear right here, you saying, dude, I had a fucking issue. I call Matt at one in the morning, two in the morning. You saying I had this. Yeah. Pat fucking ripped me a new one. In yeah. Dude, we fucking need that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And what you guys have is something that a lot of people out there, like include myself, I might have some. And they don't there. understand either. Dude, yeah. Yeah. priceless, yeah. priceless. Because yeah. one situation like that could fucking finish you. Yeah. yeah. Completely. And having the right team around you, bro, fucking impactful, bro. Impact. It's profound. You know, Patrick has often said that entrepreneurs will save the world. Yeah. So entrepreneurs saved my world. Yeah. Entrepreneurship saved the world of everyone that's here because we got goals, dreams, aspirations, and the, where the country is going right now with interest rates, with inflation, with this administration, whether it's a red or blue in the White House, you know, they have so much impact from an economic empowerment standpoint. So how have you seen entrepreneurship directly impact your life and the people that you're recruiting, training, coaching, developing at your workshops, at your BOMs? How have, seen, how have you seen the fact that you stick to your standards? The fact that even though people quit on you, even though the fact people cancel their policies on you, they rethink their financial priorities and they don't need insurance anymore, they need to save for retirement anymore, but you stick to your guns. And and you and, and you and you've grown. When people, it seems like when people quit on us or people doubt us, we grow some more. So how's entrepreneurship directly 
impacted your lives? And, and because a lot of people today, what's Zoom trying to do? Zoom is trying to get everybody to come back to the office instead of working online and work from home. They're trying, hey, come back because we know we're losing you. So how does entrepreneurship impact your life? Um, more ways than I can even come up with. I wish you would have prepped me for that question because that's a deep one. Yeah. You know, the one word is, is opportunity. But, you know, Matt, everybody shows up that I invite. Everyone says yes. I never had any cancellations. I mean, that's just, <laughs> everyone, perfect business. You're perfect for this business because per you're a former break dancer and a bar uh, mitzvah host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <And> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, entrepreneurship creates opportunities that people don't realize it's in front of them. And the challenge is we've been conditioned the last hundred plus years. And we think that's how it's always been. I need a job, Mace. I need salary and benefits, Mace. Okay. So here's what's funny. I was talking to someone the other day and I said, how much, you know, what are you making? They gave me the number. I said, how much are your benefits? I said, what's vision? What's dental? I said, what are the benefits you want? You know, and they said, health insurance. I said, okay, what's that number? That was like, you know, uh, that I come, let's say, let's say 1500 bucks for, for a family. Vision is cheap, dental is cheap. Yeah. So you're really concerned about health insurance? A 401k is crap anyways, I have better retirement plans than that. And the reason why a company gives you that is a different topic we'll talk about, but I can get my own retirement. I know how taxes work, I know how retirement, so I know what guarantees work. So maybe your lack of education, awareness and environment is not pointing in the right direction because I don't need to make 50,000 a year because I'll need benefits. I'd rather go make a half a million dollars a year and buy my, my own. Because yeah. if I leave my job, get fired, get let go laid off, guess what happens to my benefits? They go away. So hey, that sir. means I'm still under control and on thumb. I'd rather start my own and have more freedom and opportunity. So entrepreneurship really does give you the platform to design your life and not just make a living. And I think a lot of us are taught how to be obedient workers, that if you don't have letters after your name, you're nobody in this world. And I, I don't think it's letters after your name, I think it's handshakes under your belt. It's about who you know, who you meet, what you accomplish over the years. So, you know, I was asking Chris, what, what, we're always competing. I said, okay, how many numbers, how many people did you connect with at the vault? He gave me his number, right? I said, that's it? I said, give me your number. That's it? I said, what do you got? I got, a, I got two pages. I was able to connect with two pages of people saying, I'm gonna follow up with them, and that's gonna be a friendship. <laughs> That's gonna be some kind of relationship. How big, or, how big is that page? So I'm what? It's, it's it's a normal <laughs> size Lock booklet. Numbers. It's a it's a vault <laughs> size booklet. It's a vault size booklet. So uh, it was the size of the original cigar. So <laughs> somewhat shorter now. <laughs> <laughs> Different jokes, bro. But but it's really about connecting with the right people because your network is your net worth and vice versa. You're gonna become the five people of your environment. And you know, if if you're broke, you're probably hanging around broke people. If you if you got money in your pocket, you're probably hanging around people that got money. Because if you're negative, you bitch complain, I can't hang around you. Like, and I've actually done that before. Like I've caught myself like, okay, hold on, that ain't leading nowhere like you just talked about. That's self-sabotage. You go down the rabbit hole, you're done. Worse. And then entrepreneurship also keeps a very fair score. Yeah. And not only does it create opportunity, but the challenge with people is you really get to bring out your character. Yeah. Um, you know, I was working a job doing the entertainment, the breakdance and stuff. I got paid to show up, it was transactional. Well, the guy that owned the company got a piece of all the parties. He's making five, 10 grand a week. I said, damn, I wanna own something. Cause don't you wanna, own, I wanna own my property, home ownership. I own the car, I own, you know, why do people wear rings when they get married? That's a form of ownership, like we own. So no one wants, we wanna own things, there's pride in that. I wanna own my time, I wanna own my company, I wanna own my life. And when you're working for a company under an employee, not an entrepreneur, there are many entrepreneurs, I'm talking about a regular employee that has reached that cap, reached that ceiling, they're underpaid, underappreciated, overworked. That's like just drains the hell out of you. And they're begging for, hey, I want an opportunity. But the scary part is, Matt, when an opportunity is staring them in the face, yeah. they're holding on to that, that guarantee and they can't let go. But when an opportunity to be an entrepreneur says, hey, come, let's run, their character is tested. So I think entrepreneurship brings out their character and it really allows them saying hey i got this in the tank let's go yeah. and i think it brings out the best because this business will expose all your weaknesses but i also think it will enhance all your strengths and i think a lot of people have a lot of strengths that they have hidden because they're either embarrassed by them they're afraid they can be ridiculed made fun of like we're freaking weird yeah. i got no i'm weird right. but i like being weird because we're all weird and we enjoy it. And we're having a life that's pretty weird. Like right now we're like, damn. I mean, I don't think you can see the cameras, but this is weird. The tallest building on this on Ocean Drive, bro. This is weird. Not normal, huh? This not, isn't normal because normal. normal is you need to go get a degree, go get a job. And by the way, that's not good enough because you need to get a master's degree. You need to At go least. spend more money, 
Go spend a year in college with no experience. By the way, what the hell have you mastered in a year with no experience? Uh, I thought it takes five years at least for it. Anyways, so go get that job. Go make your 150 a year at a W-2 tax rate so you're taking home less. So you are paycheck to paycheck. Like, makes no sense. But then you say, listen, I got an idea, Matt. Let's go make $100 million a year. You're chasing rainbows. That's not real. Chasing rainbows. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's funny because uh, we're staying in the spot, right? I mean, I didn't think it was this big. When, remember, I was asking oh, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the couch. Yeah. Uh, well, you got hey, a king-size couch? bed, bro. Oh, you got a king-size room, room, man. King-size <laughs> room. A couch? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, and then I fired back and, hey, guys, listen. Our current money today, but we're 15 years younger. What are we doing right now in Miami? <laughs> <laughs> the, not, not this podcast. I cannot right confirm <laughs> nor deny where I will be. So yeah, yeah, I, know, think, uh, I think the place you're going later might be. <laughs> dude, I, yeah, that's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, this no, podcast. I'm talking about Kiki. No, this week's been interesting because it's been from Brickle to Boca. And oh, snap. The clients. So, dude, I, man, yeah, that's uh, my wife might hear this podcast. So I got <laughs> to keep it censored. Not that I did anything wrong, baby. You know. Uh, <laughs> We do know some really good asset protection <laughs> options if you want to discuss them. <laughs> no, you know, uh, another note, when you mention entrepreneurship, I look at entrepreneurship as a roller coaster with amazing memories, man. And that's exactly what it is. Because, I mean, what, what you guys create as entrepreneurs, what we create as entrepreneurs, dude, that's endless, man. You're never, even the even the bad shit that you go through. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's something that you're proud of at one point. Like, yeah, I went through that shit. Look where I'm at fucking now. Yeah, yeah. Like, look yeah. at this shit. I fucking, who can you say? I was talking to a person in the lobby right now who works for Wells Fargo 10 years as uh, they do back end work for them. And I said, so why are you still there? Because they're bitching that they're here for that uh, bachata convention. So I put, I got to be back at work tomorrow. How lucky of you guys. You get how to come lucky, here on the beach. Lucky. lucky. Yeah, lucky. I hate when they say that. And I said, well, well what stops uh, you from doing this? I'm like, well, I went bingo. to school for this. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what I have to do. And I'm like, I'm you don't have to do shit. Like, are you yeah. serious? So I asked her this. So you're telling me that you're content with what you're doing right now and you can live the rest of your life. It's not content, they're scared. Oh, she said, absolutely not. She goes, yeah. I hate it. Yeah. So I'm like, scared I'm thing, it's scared. Yeah. It's scared because remember, how do you make decisions? You make decisions based on certainty. None of us said, hey, is this chair gonna fall? We just said the chair, you just sit in the damn chair. It's certainty. Well, you, even if it fell, this is how crazy entrepreneurs are. We are in a fucking balcony with our back facing the fucking <laughs> thing. I, I have no idea where these chairs came from. <laughs> we didn't even check it. The balcony is going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it, right? Like, that's how we do it. Thank you. Now I'm going to think about that whole damn time. Right. Yeah, I'm like, hey, that's okay. <laughs> You're I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, to go back to the question, just what about entrepreneurship, it it actually, for us, man, it frees us from the matrix. That's what entrepreneurship you does. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And uh, the reason I say that, because I did it, you know, I went through, like John right, said, yeah. I went through school, told us to get the degree and did that, was making 150 as an engineer. And I said, this can't be life. This can't be it. That's it. You know, I got dreams. I got goals. I want more. And they were telling me, like, you can't have more. And it's like, well, I got to do something different then. Right. I got to become a business owner. And like you were saying, the certainty, the, the fear that grips people. And it's like entrepreneurs, man, we're not fearful. If there wasn't for entrepreneurs, man, people wouldn't have jobs. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's not for everybody, right? Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. You got to be a little weird. You got to be a little crazy, right? Because you're taking on risks. You know, you're taking on these things that other people don't want to do. And that's why we live the life that we live, because we're not lucky, yeah. right? We put in hard work for this. Charles, would you say you made a, sorry to, to, to ask a question sure. here, but do, would you say you and Jazz did a calculated risk? going in full time because you started Jasmine and then next thing you know you, you, you're you blowing up so yeah. was it calculated or was this boom I mean for me I, I did make a, a compulsive decision in the sense of like Matt sold me you know it was like but even in my compulsiveness it was like it was calculated. it was a few hundred dollars yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like it, it makes sense and it's less than what the, you pay the on the risk uh, was yeah. like oh man this is nothing I mean even if if it doesn't work out you know, I'll I'll always be thinking about what if, what if, what if. So I was like, I don't want the what if. Like, let me just jump in and see what happens. To what, yeah, and what will be, Has right? Has there yeah. been a entrepreneur that does a calculated risk? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever make a calculated risk? Yeah. But let me explain what I mean by calculated. Um, so let's just say I want to start into insurance, right? I know it's strictly commission. If I have no savings, Maybe I need to have a job that pays just the bills. I know exactly what I need. I'm not looking for a career, just a job. 
but I put more time into the business because I want to work harder on myself than my job. So the calculation is I just got to make sure my bills are paid so I don't have commission breath. So I can sit down with the family and say, I can truly help you for the right reason, not because I need to pay the bills. And that's exactly so just, what just I did. just kind of balancing it out. I mean, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, like calculation yeah. is, uh, or, it's next five moves. Or, or, or maybe the recruiter, the recruiter, you wasn't good enough because he would have been mad. He would have just locked you in and you would have figured it out. And somehow sold something to make well, that. You don't want to hear the answer to that, right? right? You don't well, want to recruit, you don't well, want to recruit you know, <laughs> well, Matt, well, Matt did recruit me, and and he said, you don't have to quit your job right now, you oh, know? That's good. Yeah, yeah. He said, you don't have yeah. to quit your job, and but, I, you know, people ask, well, how much time do I need to invest this, that, and the third? I spent every free moment that I had doing this because I wanted to step away. And you're right. a gamer. You're a, you're a video gamer. Oh, a huge video gamer. Yeah. You know, addicted to Call of Duty, Madden, 2K, <laughs> you name it. Those are engrossing names, You man. know what I'm saying? Yeah, those are crazy games. You know I what I'm saying? Games. And one day- You're a gamer? Face Clan guys? Huh? You heard of the Face Clan guys? Uh-uh. Like I'm I'm so I'm so far removed from that that oh, that life now. My clients, I was gonna say, oh man. Nah, I'm I'm you nah, the headset yeah, I'm so far removed from you that. Hook him up. You know, <laughs> but literally one day my wife used to complain. You know that money. You know sitting there ain't making you no money. And I remember just one day it just kind of hit me. I said I'm literally just wasting time doing this yeah. and just stop cold turkey. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Wow. I, I mean, listen, man. The, the, the whole saying, man, is you got to be crazy. I, I I'd rather I'd rather be crazy and rich. The normal and broke. Oh, for sure. You know, it's yeah. I'd rather be oddball. Chris, I, remember which, I, I, yeah. I will say, man. I mean, obviously, the, the money, lifestyle. I got started in this business, man. I'm from Compton, California. I didn't see entrepreneurs growing up, man. We had food stamps as a kid, gang invested. Buying you saw some runs. entrepreneurs, man. I saw some, <laughs> I you're right, you're right. You I saw, saw a lot hood. of transactions. I saw some hood ones, man. And like you said, because even to this, day, to this day, I internally analyze oh, yeah. like distribution on a different level. Oh yeah. yeah. Because I grew up, and that was like the game. Like, if you want to make it, man, it's like top distro, man, <laughs> moving away, doing certain things. And so you come to this business, man, you choose entrepreneurship, and you work hard, you grind, man. We're living on my in-law's couch. What am I doing here? It's the right move. And it forces you to, to reinvent yourself, man, to seek God, to seek wisdom. Like you were saying earlier, man, by just praying to God on PCH, man, you have to go there because it requires not just you, but a higher power to get there. And you get there, and the money will come, Kids are good, private school, the cars, the, the, the neighborhoods, all that good stuff. But I think the biggest thing for me is the influence. The Chris. influence, because I, they say too much is given, much is expected. And like the influence we have in this business is crazy. I'm seeing the way we can move people yeah. to the right direction or wrong direction. And me growing up and being a PK, a pastor's kid, and being a, and my mom was an evangelist, right? My dad was a pastor. And my dad did some time in the 80s, did that decade in prison, got out, right? And so we would go to South Central, used to LA, you know, South Central, as a kid, yeah. my mom's preaching the gospel on a bullhorn to crack crackheads, wow. uh, a drug addicts, and prostitutes and game bangers. I'm eight years old, nine, I'm, I'm watching this, and I'm like, this is cool, but why are we broke? Mm. Uh, they were giving to others. We have a, my dad had a halfway house, he would help, help guys come out of prison and get situated, but we're broke and struggling. What a, pr what a, what so, a perspective. So I'm like, man, if, 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 if servant people are broke, I don't, I don't wanna be a servant. Like I'm, I mean, everybody I'm seeing that's giving and who's loving is bro. I'm, I'm, that's not me. And it took me realizing that is there an industry? Is there somewhere I can go where I can give? And as you mature in business, you realize you find the right mentors. You realize, man, those who serve in business can earn big money. Yeah. And, and so you realize that the impact we have as entrepreneurs, man, we, we're changing the world one by one by by getting people the red pill, not the blue pill, the red pill, right? Yeah, right. Get them out of the, the system of a work a job for 40 years, retire. And I, I'm just excited about the influence of that because I know my heart and what I want. And so as people follow me into the right direction, man, yeah. we can make a much bigger impact in the world. How much of that would you say it's uh, family driven? You know, what we grew up, because I think, man, I think we're about the same age, just yep. what you're saying. Yep. 21. And yeah. uh, I was an altar boy. Really? And I grew up in the church yeah. and, you know, it was like, we had every Sunday get up there early, help do the tostadas and yeah. the things to feed the people. Uh, Saturday, Thursday, I mean, it was church every day. Because yeah. for me, it was like, you got a church, go to school, get a degree, and then that's how you become successful. Yep. But dude, we lived in an apartment my whole life. My parents always used to work, we can't afford it, we can't afford it, we can't afford it. And so when I broke that cycle, I was the, the bad person. Really? I was like, oh, fuck, yeah. he went against everything we said. Yeah. Like, nobody talked to him. Yeah. So my whole family didn't talk to me for like five. For it, That's why I joined the Marine Corps. Wow. I said, I'm going to lead to the Marines because you're the black sheep. I'm out of here. I was like, fuck it. I'll leave and get out. Yeah. And even like that, they yeah. told me, well, you're just going to go over there, kill yourself, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So how much of it do you think it's family that causes us to build that fear? Yeah. 
and stops us from growing. Oh, it's such or is it just a culture? I think that goes back to a point to prove when Patrick in the vault book, go figure, and the vault book talks about what drives you. Yeah. There's a whole section on what drives you. Yeah. But well, the, the whole thing, man, in Deuteronomy, in your, your, in your book, in Deuteronomy 8.18, it says God has given us the power to create wealth. So as we wrap this up, guys, I, I want you guys' manifesto. You know, Patrick's crusade with PHP agency is saving America through free enterprise. And we've all kind of got our rift on how we're saving America, our personal embodiment of, of that message, that crusade. So whoever wants to go first on this one, what is your message to fathers out there? What is your message out there to those who are feel that they're overlooked and underpaid and underappreciated and overwhelmed? Feel that, what am I working so hard for? People work for the jobs 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Some guys have no pension to show for, or retirement to show for. What's your message to America? I got that one, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll hop in right quick. You know, sign his heart. <laughs> Boom, <it's right> <laughs> hey, yeah, it was, man, when you said that. You know, I do a shameless plug here, right, right here for the Wealth Academy Network. You know, subscribe, and uh, subscribe. that's right. Subscribe to the Wealth Academy Network, man, where where we're talking about that. You know, uh, one of my biggest things about be, you know, being a team parent, you know, to all the fathers out there, man, is that, you know, there's some but there's there's men like us, like like yourself, like like hard here, you know, who are fathers. And, you know, we need each other because it, the shit is tough. It's tough raising kids. It's, it's tough raising it's tough being a man. It's, it's tough being a husband if you are a husband, you know, and it's like, man, you got to go back to your kids. You got to go back to them. You got to raise them. You got to be there in their life, even yeah. if your dad wasn't in your life like that. Yeah. You know, um, you know, Matt, you shared how your father was. My father wasn't the he was there. Yeah. You know, I saw him. But, you know, having that relationship was was different. You present know, but absent. present but absent. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, I. I. I remember one time I was playing basketball and a guy walked up to me about 19 years old and said, hey, Ellis, man, can you help me? Can you know do what you do? You, you drive a nice car, you wear new, newest Jordans all the time, but you don't look like a dope, a dope dealer, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I, I can't help you because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't own a company. I got a job. I can't put you in my company unless I own it, even That's if crazy. you had a degree. I could buy you lunch. <laughs> right. Who knows what happened to him after that? Yeah. What if I was his last line of resort, mm. you know? And from that moment on, there was something in me that said, I got to do something different. Because mm. the next time somebody approaches me in that yeah. situation, yeah. I want to be able to say yes. And today I'm able to say yes. And so if you're looking for that, you got myself, you got Chris, you got Chu, you, you got Mason, you know, you got all of these phenomenal men out here that's looking... JP here, man, you know, family man, married kids also too as well. Yeah. There's men out here who have come from different struggles, different backgrounds that can still help. Yeah, freaking awesome, And are bro. open, willing, ready to help. Let's go. Yeah. Make some connections. Subscribe to the Wealth Academy. Yeah, here's what I would say, man, on different, on different though. Obviously, um, being in fathers, man, we have so many fathers' homes in America right now. I mean, so many kids are being raised by single moms, and it's really hurting America. And I think for men out there who are looking for a way out, looking for... Uh, mental health, looking for a way to, to, to have clarity in what they need. Entrepreneurship, capitalism is the best system in the world. Here's why I say that, because as an African-American, everybody here is we're a minority. We have a Jewish man here, right? Are you since they're a minority in a sense, right? Man of the cloth. <laughs> <laughs> right, man of the cloth here. Kind, bro. Um, hey, subscribe to a system where in America, I, I'm not an immigrant. I was born and raised in this country. And I see people come here from different countries, third world countries, like Guatemala, El Salvador, El Salvador Nigeria, yeah. Kenya, and they come here and within five years on a business, they're doing well, they're flourishing. And guys who were born in LA, Chicago, yeah. Dade County, Florida, like they're struggling and saying, I can't win in America. That's an excuse, man. Yeah. And, and for me, like I, I I made a choice to not succumb to the my circumstances and my environment and say, hey, I'm a black man, so hey, pity me, I'm not, I can't make it. No, it's not the case at all. Speaking, Chris. And speaking. so like, we're giving a system. America is still the, the best country in the world. Regardless of what's happening here, man, you can come here lock in get focused have a skill go serve people make money provide for your family be a husband be a father no excuses but but find the right environment find the right people like that young guy who look, 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 looks for advice from you like find somebody plug in someone here if you're in dallas texas man master pause in dallas texas he can mentor and culture you if you're in florida you got mason here my man's in la you're in chicago and atlanta i'm in the dc area is find somebody not us find somebody who's willing to coach you to show you the way more importantly not just talk the talk but walk the walk and step-by-step step show you how to be a better man. Phenomenal. 
Man, send out my message, bro. Man, can I add to the <laughs> <that> Christmas? <laughs> he right, so he doesn't want to go on. Man, man. 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 Check up we are right now about look, this topic. It's like, man, look, just stop making freaking excuses. You may say, yeah, that's good for you to say. That's good for you to say. We got a minority here that that made it. My dad is from Honduras. He dropped out of high school. He chopped bananas on a banana plantation. He ain't got no education. Yeah. I come from New Orleans, raised by a single mom. It's like if I was able to get out, he was able to get out of Compton, California. He was able to get out of L.A. You can get out, too, as well. Right. I'm not saying that you don't need no help, but there's people out there ready to help. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's our choices, man. It's choices. Everybody has a choice. And I think like hitting a dead horse here with the same thing but i'll let you i'll put another perspective if you are starting to make money and you get caught up with the whole flex thing the whole social media yeah. the whole you got to keep up with everything yeah. one advice right here billionaire client of mine dude filthy rich six divorces seven kids seven kids only one of them talks to him and he left me with this he said somewhere down the line i forgot who i was doing it for mm -hmm. well, <laughs> but if i could give you the biggest advice do it with the right team and don't ever forget who you started the journey for. That's profound. So, man, that's profound. I think that's powerful right there. Dude. That's profound. Can I take this one too? Please. So you guys all met my dad, sweet daddy. Speaks five languages, teacher, masters. And what's funny, you look at this table, Filipino, white boy, El Salvadorian, 100% El Salvadorian. Uh, Depends on the side of town I'm in. There you go. Okay. <laughs> what, whichever side I gets the most safely. You know, black, you know, black from Cali, Louisiana, all, all over the world. And we're sitting here just chilling. All three of you guys have stayed at my home. Mm -hmm. You've been in my house when I'm not even around. You know, you'd be in town. Hey, Mace, uh, you in town? No, I'm out of town. I need a place to crash. Don't get a hotel. Ding, 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 ding. Go to my, yeah, he has the passcode. He's got my keys to my car. Bro, go. This is family. And Hold I think on, I need Mace's number right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you're welcome. But listen, we just got a new house. And, you know, it's pretty sick. You guys, get, you guys will be coming over soon. But, um, you know, you look at the community, look at the environment. And I was talking to one of my guys in Orlando, and he, he talked about relatability. I don't have kids. I can't relate to you. I can't relate to you. I can't relate to you. I wasn't a single father. I can't relate to you. But I'm still a son. I still have a dad. And if I'm talking to one of my guys and trying to mentor him and he can't relate to me, not a problem. Go talk to Matt. He was a single dad. Don't give me that shit. Yeah, yeah. Go talk to Swaz. Don't give me that shit. That's an excuse. You're hiding behind the kids versus finding in front of them. Because my dad and you know our last name, we were proud of our last name. I'm very proud of my father. I think I have the best father in the world. And no matter what, my dad always made sure my brother, my mom and I, Always had food in our stomach, clothes on our back, and a roof over our head. My dad's a teacher. Teachers do not get paid a lot of money at all, and he's very intelligent. And we had a lot of tough times financially. But I remember this, and this is the part that will always freaking stick with me. This is why even when I get in my little zones, when I get a little upset or, you know, the complaining mode, we talk about it, I snap my ass out of it real quick and go back to gratitude. My 13th birthday, 12th birthday, 12th birthday. I'm a big Dennis Rodman fan. This is when the Bulls were crushing in the 90s, Chicago, right? For sure. And everyone loved Jordan. I love Rodman. Rodman was a beast, defense, all over the place, scrappy. Yeah. And I wanted a Dennis Rodman jersey. Uh -huh. I wanted a Rodman jersey. But I hear my brother in my ear saying, don't ask for anything because mom and dad are struggling financially. So now I start getting this guilt. Guilt, 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 guilt. And you get that, you talked about growing up, but you get that guilt. Yeah. So my head, I'm open in the car, my dad's got a blue neon, we're driving to a sports authority to go pick up this, this Dennis Robin jersey I've been begging for for months. Go inside, I look around the, the jersey 16 times, and then I just walk out. Dad's like, John, where are you going? I said, I don't want it, Dad, I don't want it. Get in the car, I start bawling, crying. He's like, John, what's going on? I said, Dad, I don't want to get the jersey because I feel guilty because Dean told me that you and Mom were struggling financially. My father turns the car around, goes up the sports authority, grabs my hand, pulls me inside, grabs the jersey, pays for the jersey, picks me up, gives me a hug and a kiss, and says, happy birthday. That's a father. That's right. Yeah. God damn it, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Killing dreams. You know, so my, wow, dad's, story, my dad's gone through all that. So being a single guy, when I mean single, I mean not married. What I mean by being single, I'm dating, but I mean not single, not, not married. I don't have kids. 
but I still can understand what fathers go through. Absolutely. I still know what the fuck fathers go through. The stress you go through with the kids, with the twins, everything you've been through, bro. I get it because yep. I saw the look on my dad's eyes. I saw the look in my dad's eyes. I was in a household when they were going through it. So don't freaking tell me that I can't relate to it. I get it. Yeah. The difference is I want to set a better example and give you an opportunity as an entrepreneur to not have to go through that crap. So one, I think leverage is a big thing for building the business. I think being in the right community is, is important. But I think you know reminding yourself why you got started is important. Um, I got, I, got, I got distracted with the dad story that because that one hits me because that, that, that was real, bro. Yeah. I mean, I forgot the freaking question for Grand Island. No, because that that one like I go back to to freaking sport every time with the white freaking tile with the way they had it lined up with that. You go back to it, so I think if you just go back to why you got started and you and you keep in that state, you could get in that state. NLP, just go back. I think it'll keep you focused. So I don't even know if that was a freaking question or not, but that's just so what's on my mind. Great point. Absolutely. For those of you watching this conversation, this roundtable conversation post Vault Conference 2023, and you're saying, oh, Matt, I'm stuck. Inflation's been kicking my ass. I'm in a business, and the, instead of me running a business, the business is running me. You might need to make some tough decisions. I want to let you know there's no shame in failure and getting knocked down. I, I, was, I, I was telling Michael, uh, Mike Tyson, I said, listen, Mike, the world loves you ba based on your greatest knockouts, but I wholly respect you more for the times you've been beat down and you got back up and you recreated yourself. And some of you need to do that. You need to recreate yourself. You need to define yourself. You need to figure out who you are as a man, as a, as a citizen of this country. And uh, we talk all the time about the PTSD uh, situation in the veteran community. And my message to you in terms of how we're saving America through free enterprise, there's only one of me. But if I build and rock with the right people, collectively we can make a massive impact and influence out there. The enemy's already doing it. Enemy's out there rallying all the complainers, rallying all the, yep. I don't have enough, yep. rallying all the people that are entitled, rallying all the people that say, you know, there's nothing in this world for me, there's nothing in this country for me. We're going opposite, baby. And so if you want to go opposite in your life, you want to go opposite in your finances, you want to go opposite in the year coming ahead, and every year going forward, this could potentially be the beginning of the best years of your financial life if you make a decision to connect. And I'm not... The only person you can connect with. There's a bunch of guys here you can connect with, and I advise you and recommend that you ought to be thinking about connecting with the right people because the last place you want to be is alone and isolated. That's where the enemy beats you up with experience. Yep. But if you find yourself in a community of men, save in America. First, save yourself, man, before you save America. Save yourself in this country. If you can do that, set yourself up for success. Find out what you don't know. Be aware of things, increase and improve your financial literacy and, and implement things that you're learning. At, by the way, we're just talking about this right now, right? The people that don't implement after this conference, 3,000 people here, maybe 300, 300 implements. Well, if you want to be an implementer, reach out to us. So that being said, guys, we got an after party to go to. Yes. We got uh, we had a boardroom there with uh, Patrick, but David and then the Valley Tame and crew and the rest of the people in the vault community. So that being said, guys, make sure we've got all the links for all the gentlemen here that's on this podcast in the description channel. We've been putting here in the lower thirds as we've been having a conversation. If you haven't connected with him yet, I advise you to do so. That being said, guys, from Miami, Florida, on behalf of Chris Hart, Alex Suazo, JP Pena, and my man, Money Mace, Millionaire Mace. Till we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today. <laughs>